Okay, well, thanks, Keith. Um, as Keith just pointed out, this is going to be kind of a three-part series, if you will. Uh, the important things to get across are, uh, again, for those of you that are still having to download it, this is what it looks like. Um, Keith has made it available to everybody. Uh, in the beginning, I literally asked anybody that wanted it, send me their email address, and I would send it to them, and I did. Um, but let's go back to why 5D before we get into 5D, okay? So why 5D um, came about because over the years, over the many years I've been playing Baccarat, I bought all sorts of books. There weren't as many YouTube videos and stuff as there are now, but I've watched all of them, okay? And, uh, you know, I decided that I needed to create my own methodology to play but it had to be based on the math of the game, okay? And for those of you that um, aren't aware, there's uh, something that I've sent out to many people also. It's called Uncle Buck's Black Rod Bible. And all it does, it talks about, the beginning talks about, you know, one event in a row or 50% of all events, you know, twos are 25%, et cetera, et cetera. So anything that is related to 5D is really a, uh, a comparison of the long-term math of the game versus what is particularly happening in that shoe at hand, okay? And I, over a lot of, you know, uh, uh, trial and error, uh, came up with a way to condense a lot of information on one card and make it easy for people to digest what was happening in the shoe, okay? I called it 5D for a reason, okay? The reason it was called 5D was, at the time, uh, if you were a foreman member, you would know this, okay? Um, there had been a discussion of 3D, okay, which is basically bank player, officer repeat, and OTB on TBL, okay? And then at one point, Ellis asked, would somebody, Ellis, you guys know who Ellis is, okay? He's all, he's all over the form of his name or whatever. He asked, would somebody be interested in going to a fourth disparity and be willing to talk about it? And of course, I immediately raised my hand. And I said, yes, because I'm already doing it. <laughs> now, this goes back to 2014, early 2014. So what is it? That's uh, six years ago now. Okay. And I haven't looked back since. Okay. I it took me uh, a long time. I, I, we started the discussion, okay? The real discussion started, you can go back, if you, those premium members, you can go back and see it. It um, starts up on May 13th of 2015. May 13th of 2015. And it talks about, it, it's, it's it headed with this topic, if you will. It says, why 5D? is about to change the way you live. So during the course of discussion over many months, um, you know, we talked about it. You'll see that if you go to the thread, you'll see all the discussions back and forth and Kevin's taking us on a wild goose chase, which I'm known to do. Um, and and I, it's like, I just kept saying it to myself, okay, I think this is gonna work. And then finally people prevail upon me to actually write down and put it on the forum just exactly what i was doing okay so if you if again if you're a premium member you can see this if you're not um but uh, you know I, I don't know what to tell you okay but i wrote 12 lessons and the first one was published on october 9th of 2015 so so understand we had been debating and talking about this for five months before i actually published the first lesson and the first lesson was kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. Um, and I called it no s'mores in the bedroom. S'mores are, you know, with graham crackers and, uh, you know, marshmallows and stuff. And I went through a series of 12 lessons. If you start, and if, if anybody wants to, you go back to October 19th, October 9th of 2015. I gave you the name of the topic. And again, it's important that you understand that all of these things have been brewing in my mind for many years. It's just I never really uh, felt comfortable setting down and putting it all in writing. Okay. 
So I proceeded to do the 12 lessons. And then I realized, okay, I got to get serious now. I'm going to actually create a manual for 5D. Me with, you know, minimum computer skills. Um, so I'll actually create a manual for 5D. Okay. Now, if you go back even further than that, you know, I've got a box sitting over here. Um, I'm just going to look at it here and I'll reach into it. And I'll show you some of the things, you know. I mean, everybody ought to have, you know, uh, the American Mensa Guide to Casino Gambling. I know I do. Uh, certainly everybody, you know, should have paid like I did $500 for Target box, right? Um, what else we got? Oh, geez. I am one of probably the few keepers of the final word manual right here. I actually was at the seminar uh, here in Las Vegas. It was back in 2017. I've got the, uh, of course, the NOR approach to Bach Rack, you know, so it's on the forum. I've got the big score method. Okay. Um, they'll say, oh, geez, I got a million dollar Bach Rack. So that leads us back to 5D. Okay. So I've got a whole bunch of them, but that's just a sampling, you know, you know putting them back in a the box. So what, what, what happened is that I realized by reading all these things and looking at all these videos and everything is that I knew as much as anybody did about plain butter. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that if you follow the math of the game and you understand it inside and out, you can understand it just as well as I do. Okay. So I tried to create a step-by-step -step process which uh, comes under what's called lesson 13 okay um where the 5d manual was created so the original one looked just like this this is what it looked like okay and it's got pages and notes and it's a step-by-step -step, uh shows you how i played a couple of shoes one was from the mgm in 2015 one was from the red rock back in 2014 which is again when i started thinking about this okay the, the manual that, you know, Keith has said is free to download talks about some of the lessons, okay? But if you want to see what I wrote, originally wrote and you want to go through all the responses and questions and whatever, again, you got to be a premium member of the forum and you can go back to the forum. And there's a lot of darts out and um, I'm going to be looking down at the manual as we speak. Um, but basically, the important part of the uh, uh, setup is I felt that the tote boards had changed from the vertical format, which is the same as a roulette tote board, to a horizontal format, okay? Now, this happened over a period of a couple of years, but by 2015, almost everybody was using the horizontal format in their tote board, in the casino. You know, the, everybody knows what a tote board is. Okay, so I felt that 5D, for me, again, I, I did this for me. I, I didn't do it for you or you or you. Sorry about that. You know, um, I'm glad that, you know, some of you have, uh, you know, taken the time to look at it and consider it. And, you know, maybe there's even an element in there that you've, you know, learned that you play on your own, whatever. But I felt that it had to be in a horizontal format. Can it be in a vertical format? Yes, it can be. Okay. The first page of the manual, you'll see the horizontal format. And I'm trying to get in front of the camera here. You'll see the horizontal format. You see it down at the bottom. Uh, uh, to me, it's the right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, I'll put it up closer. I don't think you can really see it. But basically, I started out with the four disparities. And the four disparities were banker, player, opposite versus repeats, okay, OTBL versus TBL, and something that came to be known on the forum as OO versus TT. All OO means is it's opposite three times back. Okay. So when it, when a result occurs, it is, a, it is some is either opposite three times back or it's the same as three times back, that meaning player or banker. And the easy way to keep track of all this is again, I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see it if you have the manual printed out. On the very top line right here, right where my finger is, you know, I'll give you the finger right there. On the very top line, I actually recorded the tote board. And I do to this day. And many of you have played with me. Many of you have seen me do this. I actually write down the tote board. Now I use little stick figures. 
Okay, because behind me, you'll see my CPA license from the state of Ohio procured in 1975. <laughs> Fortunately, I passed the exam while I was still in college. So I had learned through that process, every piece of document from a client that I ever worked on in the but you know, five years I was a you know worked as a public accountant. I had to initial it. I had to put little marks on it, and we had all sorts of things. They were called tick marks. So when I created 5D, in order to get this all on one card, okay, and to do it at casino speed, I came up with the concept of using tick marks. A little, just a black pen, okay. Any casino card you want to use, whatever. You know, that's the ones I have at the table. For, you know, and at the outset of any game, you'll see me marking at the very top of the card. It's on. It's right here on the you know, manual. Banker and player. That is the toe board. Okay. That is the same as those circles on the toe board. There's a space in between. There's two two spaces in between. Again, I don't know how closely you can see this, you know, because of the camera and stuff. That are blank. And then I again put the bank player. Opposite, repeat, OTBL, TBL, and the OO or TT. Okay, it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's not much, <laughs> not much to it. It's just after every hand, you've got to kind of make the marks at the top. What does the toad board say? Oh, it was a bank. Okay, then you go down below, and you've got a numerical summation of how many banks there were. If it was a player, same thing. If, if it was opposite the last decision, okay, like let's say it, you know, changed from player to banker, so that's an opposite. I'd make a little mark in the opposite column. If it was the same as the last decision, I'd make a mark in the, you know, uh, the, the, the T column, uh, which is um, um, the same as. And on and on for one back, two back, and three back. And another way of looking at this is I told people that had a little difficulty grasping it, or maybe they came late to the, you know, the forum and we weren't using some of that terminology, is all the uh, uh, OTBL, I'm sorry, option repeat, that's just one back. So I sometimes I'll tell people just call it O1 and T1, opposite or the same as. That's a repeat, that's the same as, okay? And it's really easy to pinpoint whether it's opposite or the same is because right here on this top line, this top line right here, okay, you've got the toe port. You've got the toe port. So all you're going to do is count back one. It's either on the same line or it's on the opposite line from the previous result. The same goes for OTBL and TBL. That's two back. It's either opposite, two back, meaning it's, it's on a different line, okay, or it's the same as. Two back, banker or player. So that's OT, O2, and T2. Okay. And then O, O, and TT. Okay. Again, down here at the bottom, down here at the bottom, because I'm doing this backwards instead for the camera. Um, o, O, and TT, that's just O3 and T3. Okay. Now, I didn't pick this stuff arbitrarily. Again, Ellis wanted to have a discussion about what if we had a fourth disparity? And I, again, I said, I, I, I said, yeah, I'll start, I'll get in that discussion because I'm already doing this. I'm already doing this stuff. Okay. Well, to make a long story short, over a period of time, you know, while this was all brewing and, you know, talk, being talked about on the forum, Ellis decided to leave the forum and create his own business or hook up with somebody else. I forget exactly the circumstances. But I decided when I published, the the manual the 5d manual that i'd like to have a counterbalancing uh or a, a disparity that was different than you know one back two back three back rather than go four back i said no, let's do something different and at the time there was a uh, uh methodology and i hate to call them systems called mdb million dollar bakra okay I bought it just like everybody else, um, but I bought it, and I'm not going to get into the the you know uh, 
the, the system itself. I mean, anybody wants to see it, I'm sure they can, you know, find information on the form. But I couldn't publish it as part of 5D. I talked about it, but I couldn't publish it because Keith and Ellis were still selling it. And I agree. I'm not going to, you know, tell anybody what it is. Um, but I use that as the fifth disparity. Okay. Over a period of time, I learned that the MDB, the successful, relied on a one, two, four progression. And that was just a little rich for my blood. Okay. Because you can lose three in a row fairly easily. <laughs> and then you lost seven units. <laughs> and so I said, you know, I'm going to have to find some other things. Okay. I'm going to get my uh, iPad juiced up here. I'm going to have to find some other things that I can use as that fifth disparity. Now, the other day, we had a seminar talking about the 10 best bets uh, you might consider in a to play in a casino. Uh, yeah, if those of you who were on the seminar, uh, I, I don't know, Keith, I suppose they can replay it. Um, but it talked about, in my opinion, what the 10 best things for me to be looking for outside of the four disparities that I've talked about, okay, were other things that talked about how the shoe was behaving. Maybe it had an inordinate amount of twos, okay? Maybe it had something that is exhibiting something called strong side. Well, again, I'm not going to get into those topics right now. It's on the forum, okay? Um, it was published under, uh, the, as I say, the 10 best bets um, to make it a casino. And I'm going to look it up here. Uh, it started on, uh, let's see here, March the 5th, March the 5th of 2020. So anybody, again, got to be a premium member. And anybody who wants to look at that stuff, it's intrinsic to why 5D continues to be successful. And it's more successful than ever before. Is I'm looking not just at that fifth disparity or for the fifth disparity. I'm looking at a variety of things. I mean, you know, I know Greg's out there in you know Portland, and he's played with me. I mean, I know a number of you have played with me, or I've met with it, you know, a casino and talked about it. And what I decided was is that if I could expand my horizons to consider some pretty easy things to spot, because they're right on the tote board, okay, it would provide a counterbalance to the, the disparities that I'm already looking at. In some cases, it would overrule the disparities, okay? Just because the way the shoe is behaving. Okay, so back to the manual for a minute. If we go back to the manual, uh, for those of you that have a copy of it, okay? And we go to, let's see here, I'm gonna go to, uh, okay. Uh, let's see if that's, I don't know if they have page numbers or not, but about five pages in, there's a big uh, uh, header called 5D Lesson 13. So I'll give you a second to find that. It's about five pages into the manual. I've got mine printed out, by the way. It'll say Lesson 13, the rest of the story starts here. So by now, you've probably found it. And what that does is that explains just exactly how this game that I, you know, I didn't invent this stuff. I mean, I just took bits and pieces of the best things that worked. <laughs> how it how it works on making the marks on the card. Okay. So if you look again back at the very end of the manual, you'll see a couple of exhibits. One of them will be a shoe that was played at the MGM in October of 2015. And one of them will be a shoe that was played at the Red Rock, which is part of Stations Casinos here in Las Vegas, played on January 16th of 2014. And that was 4D only. Okay. But it explains in great detail. And I, I don't want to get into the detail of every single thing. You know, again, I've told you how I market. You know, I just said a, a result occurs, player or banker, boom, it goes up at the top line, you know, one of the two top lines, because that is the tote board. And I want to see that tote board right in my face. I don't want to be going like this. Oh, there's the tote board. Oh, there's 4D or 5D. Oh, there's, the, oh, where am I? 
You know, no, I get it right in front of me. And by marking it down right in front of me, I can easily count back one, two, three. Okay, easily. Once you do it, you know, once you put your like fingernail on it or something and just go one, two, three, it's either on the same line or the opposite line. Okay. The reason that's important to record that information is, is that that over the course of the shoe will help you make the best bets you possibly can. Okay. So right now I'm just talking about 4D. We'll talk about 5D in a little bit in depth more here shortly. So the idea would be that as time goes on, if again, if you look at the front page or you look at the, you know, any of the exhibits at the back, you'll see that there are little, here, let me see if I can get a bigger one here for you. Let me, yeah, here, that's, this may be a better one. Okay, this was the MGM shoe played on October 10th. My birthday, by the way, for anybody that wants to send a card next year uh, of 2015. And now it's not my birth year, by the way. Okay. If you see those little squiggly lines, the purpose of the squiggly lines, and I didn't, I didn't use them in the game, by the way. I didn't use them. Okay. I used, but then I realized, and this is talked about in what we just did, oh, I don't know, 10 days or so ago, uh, maybe the last week even, the 10 best bets. I realized that I needed to pay attention to not just what had happened for the whole shoe, but I needed to pay attention to what's happened lately, the last, you know, five to 15 hands, and compare that with what's happened in the shoe. And directionally, that tells you how the shoe is changing, which is the beauty of all this. It wasn't just to decide what bet to make. It was to point out when and how is the shoe changing. OK, so those little squiggly marks, they're done after one of the values, player, bank, opposite, repeat, blah, blah, blah. One of them has changed by a factor of five over the course of the last hands. After a factor of five, you know, after they changed by five, one of those values could be two of them or three of them. I draw the squiggly line and I add up all the numbers again. And as the shoe progresses, I'm starting to compare. I'm starting to see what is really winning the shoe, okay? And it can be something in the first 15 hands is winning it, but at hand 40, it's something entirely differently, okay? So the whole concept relied on the 4D to give me four different ideas as to what was doing the best and then to make the next bets accordingly, okay? I think a lot of you have heard me say this before, but all it is, is you predict what's the best bet to make for banker versus player based on what the disparity between banker and player is at that moment in time. What's the best bet if you were just going to play offset repeat? What's the best bet if you're going to play OTBL or O2 and T2? Okay. And what's the bet if you go three back? Now, those are going to tell you directionally for each of those disparities they're going to tell you which one bet to make but frequently what's going to happen is two of them are going to say bank and two of them are going to say player or one of them's going to say bank or player and one of them's three of them are going to say player or bank you know whatever sometimes though none of them are going to say bank and all four of them are going to say make a player or bank because again, that's the disparities are all moving in that direction for each of the four, you know, uh, uh, disparities. Okay. So using that information, again, remember I was playing with this long before, you know, I was back in 2014. You'll see the Red Rock shoe right in there. Okay. I was doing this way before I ever talked about it, published it, or whatever. Okay. I just knew I had to do something that was based on the math of the game and was different than everything I was reading or people who were smart people were supposedly selling me. Um, so I've done that too, by the way. I've paid for this stuff too. Okay. And I realized again that I knew as much as any of those books or any of those manuals or whatever said. Okay. Now, part of what I knew was because I did read them and I picked out tidbits of you know, over time as how I was going to be, you know, making my, uh, um, how I would gamble. It wasn't until I got on the forum, though, 
in 2010, late 2010, where I actually realized I was playing backwards. Okay. What I mean by backwards is, is I bet I was talking about the math of the game. I thought everything had to go back to the, it's called regression to the mean, go back to the average. Meaning if three players happen, well, my God, the next one's got to be bang. If, you know, six players happen, my God, the next one's got to be bang. Well, of course, it doesn't have to do anything. And you guys all know that. Or you guys and girls and whoever you are up there. Okay. Animals too. They're well, they're welcome. So I had to create my own set of rules. And those rules were designed to help me make the best bet possible. But what I found was more often than not, I would get two say and play bank and two say player. Okay. To me, that was an that meant no bet. It's explained right in the manual. There's there's a there's a page of the manual. Uh, it's it's towards the end. There's an exhibit. And it talks literally hand by hand what my thought process was. Okay. As best as I could abbreviate it for you. Okay. So again, I realized that I needed a tiebreaker. And again, at the time it was called MDV, million dollar bakra. So I used that for a short period of time, even though I couldn't publish what it was. You know, I knew what it was, but I couldn't publish or say what it was. Because again, I had agreed with Keith and else I wasn't going to sell it. But I soon came to learn that there were many other things that were as valuable, if not more valuable, than another statistical scenario, okay? Which is what million dollar buck rate is. So I was looking at things like, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, we called it strong side. I don't even know if it was called strong side back then. Okay, we're talking about things like follow the shoe. We're talking about, you know, you had that Jimmy Bachrod gradually did that great thing about the twos. And I'll be honest with you, I, I knew that the twos could come in clumps. You know what I mean? I just never really thought about using that as one of the, you know, one of the, my tools. Okay. Um, we talked about shoe changes. Again, if you start back on March 5th, the 10 best bets, and it's in, I, I geeked did a video about it. Okay. Yeah, Canada Bach did some stuff about DNA Bach rod and then uh, um, uh, naturals and stuff like that. And then I talked about the 10 best bets. The, the things that I look for that either, either overrule or counterbalance, one of the two, the 4D. Okay, I still call it 5D. I have not rewritten the manual. I'm not going to. I'm not going to change it. I still play exactly the same way as I did uh, as early as six years ago. I don't, I probably was playing even a little bit before that, but I just never talked about it to anybody, you know? Um, so the, the, the question then becomes how do you use this information? Okay. So obviously if the disparities are, you know, let's just go into the bank and let's say the bank and player going back and forth. I'm going to use that as an example. So, you know, again, you'll see an example of it right here. You know, you can see it. This is the, one of the exhibits in the manual. I'm sorry for the camera situation. I'll hold it up there closer, closer. Okay. You'll see that in this particular situation, the bank and player, they were just going back and forth. Again, this is in that manual. Okay. The opposites and repeats are the O1s and T1s. They were just going back and forth. Okay. The OTBL and TBL, on the other hand, you started as a shoe went on, the OTBL started getting to be a larger disparity, okay, than the TBL. And the same thing with the uh, O3 and T3, it became larger disparity, but then it also, at the end, by the end, it had reverted back to, you know, pretty much 50-50, okay? So I came up with the idea that if the disparity differences, say between bank and player or any of the other three disparities, was two or less. So let's say bank's 22 and player's 20 at, at hand 42 in the shoe, excluding ties, okay? That had to be played as a, that your next best bet would be OTBL. Why did I pick OTBL, okay? No reason at all. The reason I picked OTBL was if you look at a lot of shoes, okay, 
historically, OTBL and TBL are going to be very, just like bank and play, are going to be very close to one another. So I wanted to pick something that each disparity, bank versus player, opposite versus repeat, et cetera, et cetera, could stand for in terms of the vote, if you will. Okay. Same thing. I would look at, you know, the, the opposite versus repeat or O1 versus T1 disparity. If it was two or less, it became an OTBL bet. So that's two OTBL bets already. What's an OTBL bet? It depends on you got to count two back, okay? And it'll tell you the next one is it should be a bank or should be a player to result in an OTBL result, okay? Okay. And on and on and on. And again, this is explained, and I know you're going to have questions about this. So because of the, you know, we're going to wrap this up in about 20 minutes, this first uh, section, I want you to focus on questions within that area, okay? Because sometimes the disparities get to be, you know, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Well, that's when that particular disparity is going to kind of overrule everything else that's going on. In other words, you're going to find shoes where I'm going to use OO and TT. That's opposite three back and the same as three back. You're going to find shoes where TT, it just takes off. And all of a sudden, you know, halfway through the shoe, uh, to, you know, TT's at uh, 31 and OO's at 18. Okay. And, and uh, you'll find shoes where it'll just, you know, continue. You'll find shoes where it'll start doing this all of a sudden. And some other disparity is going to start taking off. So you're looking, again, the purpose of looking at the recent most commons, the little squiggly lines, if you will, is you're trying to find how is the shoe changing? Sure, you can look at the tote board and say, oh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, going to be banked now, you know. But mathematically, <laughs> you've got all the information right here that supports what you're doing, okay? And I personally believe that your willingness to take the time to write down these things and analyze them, even if you only make every other bet in the shoe. You don't make every bet, okay? And that's another thing that's talked about here. You'll see there's a lot of no bets in the uh, appendix or the exhibit. Even if you don't make every bet, okay, it's important that you understand that the more detail you look at, the better bets you're going to make, okay? And my goal was to get my hit rate far above 50%. Because when I first started this, I was not flapping. You'll see it in the manual, okay? But now, I think any seminar, any discussion we've had, or any visit to Las Vegas where we went to the dealer school or whatever like that, I've been a proponent of, you know what? If you can't beat the casino, beat the shoe, you know, flat betting, you shouldn't be playing. You should certainly not be progressive betting because sooner or later you're going to get burnt. Okay. And my objective in trying to help you would be to say, get your get your house in order first. Get your hit rate up and keep working on your hit rate. Okay. And hit rate can be measured by a shoe. You know, what percentage of what wins versus losses? It can be measured as a session. And a session can be as few as one hand. Or I'll just say, you know what? I'm going to make one bet. And I and, and I have walked into that Gold Coast Casino down, down off of uh, Tropicana, whatever, Flamingo. And I have walked in there so many times, parked my car up on the roof, walked out of the tables, walked around those 18 tables until I saw one bet I was going to make. And guess what? I, I'm in the 70 to 75% range on those. Because I'm looking for the setups. I'm looking for that specific one bet. Okay. Now, a session could be five or six hands. It could be half a shoe, first half or second half. It could be 10 or 12 or whatever you want to make it. If you want, it could be 10 shoes. You know, I used to play eight or nine shoes in Biloxi when I lived in Florida. And I'd get up at like 3 a.m. They'd get a dealer out there. I'd say, get the card shoveled. I'm coming down. And I'd play for, you know, till like noon. And I could get in eight or nine shoes. Why? Because there's nobody else there. <laughs> I was playing by myself. And I would just, you know, they wouldn't let me have free hands and stuff. And I'd just wave the dealer, wave the dealer. I'd say, I'll stop you when I make a bet. But I was recording every single, you know, every single uh, uh, event, every single outcome, I'm sorry, every single hand outcome. Okay. So the important thing is, 
several things. Number number one, you've got to write it down. Now, some people have said, you know, they don't want to write down all these numbers, 22, 23, 21, 28, lay over there. They just want to do just like an OR count is talked about on the form and has been for many years, plus or minus. If you want to do that, fine. That's great. We've had uh, at, at, at the last uh, seminar we had, I said, yeah, there, there's no reason that you should not do that. If that makes you, you know, be able to do this at a, a you know, reasonable rate of, of speed, so to speak. So if you want to do that, that's fine. If you want to turn the card sideways, you know, Keith and some other people, they've developed different uh, um, uh, scorecard, if you will, formats, so that it can be done sideways, okay? Meaning uh, vertical, I apologize, vertical, okay. The second thing is, in addition to writing it down, you have to have the ability and the understanding is how to analyze the information, okay? Not just for the four Ds, not just for the ones that are on this card here on your in the manual, okay? But you have to be looking for other things that are going on in the shoe. It could be patterns. It could be, uh, again, strong side. Uh, it could be, my gosh, out of the last uh, 15 events, uh, 12 of them were two or more, you know, went to the second liner or more. That's gold. That's good. That's, that's where you make the money. <laughs> 5D will keep you on the path. Okay. Some of those other things, again, we talked about it in a seminar last week. Keith recorded it. Um, so, you know, those of you that can see it, I hope you all can, whatever. Um, Keith would have to tell you that. But again, number two is you've got to be alert and really paying attention to what's going on, not just on this scorecard, okay? Not just on the scorecard, but what else is out there? And many times there are things where you just go, oh my gosh, I need to be playing strong side right now. Or I need to be playing second liners. Okay, again, March 5th starts on the forum in the premium section, the 10 best bets. A lot of people had a lot of good ideas. Canada Bach had some ideas. OK, um, that, that we did it last week on the four, on the uh, seminar. But what I would urge you to do is. I, I created a, we had a seminar uh, March 13th, March 30th of last year. So just about a year ago, you know, right now. And I think we had 22, 23 people in the room. Uh, we did it at a hotel here in Las Vegas. This took about nine and a half hours. <laughs> um, we reviewed a lot of, in addition to 5D, we reviewed a bunch of other stuff, okay? But prior to that meeting, I came up with something called Uncle Buck's Black Rod Bible, okay? I don't know if everybody can see that. Some of you know what it is. Some of you have not seen it, whatever. But what I also did in preparation for that seminar is I decided that I'm going to use a football analogy again because it's the easiest one to understand. Anybody's ever watched NFL football? You watch the quarterback go out there, you know, for the first play of the series where they just got the ball back. What does he or she, well, I don't know, she's, what does he do in the huddle? He looks, he's got the playbook on his arm. <laughs> now it's encased in plastic, so he can, you know, but he opens it up and I'll say, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, do, do a button hook at 30 yards, number 81. I'm making that being facetious, okay? <laughs> but he takes the playbook. He doesn't just take it to the game. He takes it into the game with him. So I made up these pads of 20 cards, okay? I just took a Red Rock card, took off the words Black Rat and Red Rock, and I went to Office Depot, and I made up Okay, my own scorecards, just blank scorecards, same, same, you know, um, 12 rows, um, and then say about 40 columns. And then what I did, and I don't have it in this one because this is one of my few remaining ones, I would I just cut up the Bachrat Bible, okay? I just 
you know, cut the scissors. And I just taped it into the back of the book. You see there's some blank pages in the back. And I take that with me when I go to the casino. <laughs> so I, you know, as much as I know 5D back and forth, I take it with me. So that before the game, even during the game, this is very, this is perfectly legal, by the way. You've seen people go into the casino and they've got notebooks. You know what I mean? Eight and a half by 11 notebooks, okay? Perfectly legal. I've had many people ask what I'm doing. And I said, you know what? It's the same thing you've got up there on that tote board. It's just I've recorded it in a different manner. You know, no, and nobody's going to understand what you're doing. Nobody's going to, you know, really care. But by doing that, by taking it with you, by, by taking the information from, say, 5D or anything else you want to take, you are giving yourself a leg up and a chance to, to win. Okay, you have a much better chance to win. A much better chance to get your hit rate up. Because again, you can be playing the shoe and going, geez, I just lost three in a row. What's going on? And you can look in the back here, and it's not it's not taped in there right now, okay? But if it were, sure enough, you could say, oh, you know what? I'll pretend this is all cut up and taped in there. Oh my gosh, look at second liners. Oh, this is a shoe change. I see what, you know, we've all talked about it. shoe changes, shoe change. Comes at you, shoe starts, and it's a bunch of ones and twos, maybe a three here and there. And all of a sudden, you get five banks, four players, five banks, three players, two banks, seven players, you know, whatever. And then it goes right back to, you know, ones, twos, and threes. Well, that's a shoe change. That's several shoe changes. And again, to be able to have 5D as your, you know, kind of your mathematical, you know, playbook, but also be aware of these other things that are going on. And you might have your own best bets. You know, I don't, I don't know, you can make, but use your own. I, mean, I don't care. The idea, though, is, is that don't just read this if, you, if you're at all interested in pursuing it. I've used it for, uh, you know, um, I wrote it back in 2015. But at least five years. But more importantly, I've used it longer than that. I just didn't publish it. I didn't, you know. And I ain't switching. <laughs> Reason being is it's going to give me, even in an even shoe, it's going to point out just the moments in time where something is getting ahead. And that's where you want to be. You want to be on the things that are, you know, you, you got to track the movement of the shoe. It's a lot, hell of a lot easier than looking up at the tote board. And going, uh, uh, let's see, how many banks have there been? One, two, three, four, uh, seven. Uh, oh, uh, any more bets? <laughs> You've got it, right? You got it right here. You got the information right in front of you, okay? So to me, that's really important that you recognize not just the fact that, number one, you got to write it down. Number two, you got to know how to analyze it. It's explained in the manual. Okay, number two, yeah. Okay. Number three, you've got to have some go to concepts. I call them best bets. You know, for me, those are my 10 best bets, other than, you know, 5D, so that I've got as much ammunition as I possibly can have in making or discerning between no bet, bad bet, okay bet, good bet. And best bet. Again, I've wrote about I've written about that in the forum also. You've got to be able to, you know, not just quantify the amount of your bet, but qualify which ones you should really be making or not. Okay. 5D, if you're interested, <laughs> will help you do that. I, I get I guarantee it. You know, there used to be a uh, old uh, Wix Lumber uh, commercial uh, that's no longer Wix Lumber, by the way. Uh, they're out of business. But they had a, a chairman, his name was, uh, I think it was uh, Sanford Sigaloff. And at the end of the thing, he, he, they would say, you know, well, Mr. Sigaloff, what do you think? And he goes, I guarantee it. <laughs> I'll never forget that. So anyways, uh, we're going to wrap it up here pretty shortly. And hopefully you guys have been sending the young guys and girls, I'm sorry, whoever's on, because uh, I don't know all 100 of you, um, are going to be sending questions to Keith.